Hey, Merry Christmas. Um, with uh, Christmas around the corner, uh, Jesus uh, came into this world as a as that little baby, um, ultimately to die, to provide the opportunity for us to be reconciled to God when it was our sin that separated us from him. Uh, so today I'd, I'd like to look at um, Luke chapter 23 verse 32 through 43 uh, if you're following along again that's Luke chapter 23 verse 32 through 43 and it reads uh, two other men both criminals were also led out with him to be executed when they came to the place called the skull they crucified him there along with the criminals one on his right the other on his left Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal re rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So let's go through this passage and kind of dig through it a little bit. And um, In verse 40, the repentant thief said, Don't you fear God? Um, and I'm calling him the repentant thief um, just as a way to delineate him between him and the other thief um, but the word repent you know it sounds so scary uh, you know but all it means is to change your mind you know um, just changing your mind so if today you think you don't need Jesus's payment for your sin you know I pray that you will change your mind um, and just like the repentant thief on the cross the first step in coming to God is to fear God we all have to recognize that we are powerless uh, just like the thieves hanging on the cross hanging there slowly suffocating as they try to push themselves up to get that to get that breath um, literally there they can do nothing to change their position we have and we have no power to create the place that where we go when we die in and of ourselves, you know, we're powerless to create uh, heaven. We can't do anything to shape the afterlife um, in and of ourselves. We're powerless too. Um, Jesus' death is the only way for us to be saved by accepting him as the atoning sacrifice for, for your sins and for mine. So, so fearing God is, is a key component of, of coming to Jesus, um, recognizing that he has the authority, that he has the power, that he's in control, not us. We're not in control. We have very little control uh, in this life. Um, and, it's, and over the afterlife, we have zero control. Um, <laughs> so uh, we see this in... Uh, it, Jesus' words in, in Luke chapter 12, verses 4 through 5. Again, that's Luke chapter 12, verses 4 through 5, if you're following along uh, in your Bible. It says, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. You know, Jesus right there makes it very clear. Fear the one who can throw your body into hell. Um, he makes it very clear how 
to not go to hell. Um, and um, if you see that in Acts 4.12, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Um, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. The name is Jesus. And we that's uh, the reference is Acts 4.12, if you're following along. Um, Jesus is the only way, the only name. There's no other name by which we must be saved. Um, Jesus himself says in Acts 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father, the Father in heaven, except through me. He makes it crystal clear. This is the way to be saved. Jesus. 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 This is the only way. And this, um, on the cross, this was the only way for God's justice to be satisfied while at the same time demonstrating his great love for us. Because um, we see we see the thief talking about God is just. Um, he says in verse 41, we are punished justly. The repentant thief said, we are punished justly. So on the cross, uh, we see God's um, great love, his mercy, his grace, and his justice meeting there that God poured out his his wrath his anger his rage onto himself so that he didn't have to pour it out onto me and onto you um, and that's uh, that's an amazing thing that's an amazing thing uh, that's an amazing love uh, that he showed to us and if we're honest with ourselves we have all done things wrong or not done good things that we should have done and we've caused exponential pain in this world but you and I are not alone you know the 7.9 billion people in the world they're all sinners too we're all in the same boat we all need redemption through Jesus and like the repentant thief on the cross in verse 41 he recognized he's punished justly that this is what I deserve and we have to recognize we deserve punishment as well we must see that despite our best efforts to be a good person we fall short all the time we hurt others with our words and with our actions and if God truly loves people if he loves me and he loves you When we're hurt, it matters. Um, when someone else is hurt, it matters. And you can't just brush that off and say, oh, well, man, no big deal. Um, just wink at it. Eh, boys will be boys and girls will be girls and no big deal. So, you know, no, a good parent's going to care when their child is hurt by someone. Um, and we're all victims of someone else's sin. And we're all the perpetrators of sin that has hurt someone. So the punishment um, is just and it has to be dealt out. The person that hurt us has to be punished and, the, and we have to be punished because we've hurt others. So we all have to be punished. We, we all deserve it. For a truly loving God to be loving, he has to be just. He has to care. If I if I didn't care about my kids getting hurt uh, or um, being bullied or beat up or something, I wouldn't be a good parent to them. So I have to care, and so does God. And so to really love them, to love us, he has to care that we've been hurt and that we hurt have hurt others. Um, both have to go hand in hand. And we see that on the cross where he 
Instead of punishing us, he punished himself in our place. He poured out his wrath on himself. Um, but And God has promised to judge this entire world and even then recreate it into the something new, into this new heaven and new earth, uh, which is really exciting because there's it's so amazing as it is now with all the trees and mountains and beaches and the wildlife and the oceans and all the creatures in the oceans. And we don't even know we've only, we don't, there's like 85% of the ocean that we has not been explored yet. So there's so much we don't even know about this earth and it's going to be a new earth and to be even more exciting. So um, I'm really am excited about that. And then give us these new bodies that won't, um, they'll never get sick and never die again and won't experience this pain won't be corrupted by sin uh, and I'm excited about that and I'm, every day after work when I lay down on the ground and I'm trying to get up and I'm like <laughs> it's I'm like I'm ready for that new body and I'm only I'm only 40 I'm sure it's gonna get even worse so um, but uh, yeah and so he's promised these things and he's promised to restore the earth and restore our bodies and restore all these things and so um, it's an exciting thing um, but but God isn't wanting anyone to go to hell, and we see we see that in first, in uh, Second Peter, Second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, He's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So the reason that God doesn't judge the world now is because He's trying to give opportunity, trying to give you and me time to come to Him. To follow him, to accept him, to repent, because he doesn't want anyone to perish. Um, he doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But he's not going to force us to be with him. He's not going to force us to choose him. He's not going to force us to follow him now and be with him for eternity. Um, even though he's this amazing, loving God, he's he's not going to force us to be with him. Um, and so. The reason he's not judging the world now and all the horrible things in this world now is because he's trying to give everyone an opportunity to come to him as many as possible as many that will come come to him we see in second thessalonians 1 6 that god is just you can um look that up on your own uh second thessalonians 1 6 god is just and also in first john 4 8 uh, God is love. First John four eight. God is love. So that those are two aspects of God's character, and then we see those two meeting on the cross in this amazing way, um, where He poured out His own wrath onto Himself, so that we didn't have to have the wrath poured onto us. Um, so that's just an amazing, an amazing thing. So, like the repentant thief on the cross, we have to recognize. That if God sent us to hell for our wrongdoing, that would be justice. It would be what we deserve. Not only have we hurt others, but we're rejecting God. We're rejecting what he's showed us. We're rejecting what he's told us. Um, so that would be justice. Um, you know, like the repentant thief said, uh, we are punished justly, and we would be punished justly. I would be punished justly. Um, and and we see in verse forty-two, the repentant thief said, "Remember me in your kingdom." And only a king has a kingdom. You know, the sign above Jesus' head was accurate. He is the king of the Jews, but he also be king. Or Lord of anyone that will voluntarily submit themselves to him um, and some of you might be thinking uh, submit um, if you were trying to convince me to let Jesus be Lord of my life uh, you shouldn't have used that word um, submit um, but look at the character of God that you would submit to like the prodigal son in uh, parable in Luke chapter 15 11 uh, Feel free to follow along with that as well and look that up on your own. Luke 15, 11. God is like the father um, in the story. Um, that he will let the son, the prodigal son, leave. And he'll let the prodigal son disrespect and have nothing to do with him. And if we so desire, um, he, just, he, will, he will let us 
go away from him. He'll let us go our own our own way. Um, and he'll let us eat pig slop uh, like the prodigal son did in the prodigal son story. Um, but he doesn't want us to eat pig slop, but he'll let us if that's what we want. Um, but if, if um, we want to be away from him, he'll let us be away from him. He won't force us to be with him. He, he won't force us to follow him. If, if we want, he'll, he'll let us go. And all of us have separated ourselves from God uh, by our sin. But if we come through the gate of Jesus, uh, Jesus called himself the gate in John 10, 9, John 10, 9. Um, then if we come through Jesus, then like in the prodigal son story, God runs and throws his arms around, around him when he comes back. And he, he puts the ring on his finger and he, he puts a new robe on him. And he loves us with this amazing love that restores us to full sonship, adopted, heirs. Uh, this is the God who would, you know, when we looked at his character, this is the God who would who would wash the disciples' feet, um, even even Judas's feet, who would betray him. He he. None of the other disciples wanted to do this task. It was too lowly for them. It was too demeaning for them. But but Jesus would do that task. And this is the God that put the stars in the sky and the planets and created the universe. And he is willing to take the lowest task and wash feet. That is just, I mean, it's mind blowing <laughs> just that he would do that. Um, and that, that great love for us and that he would take the lowest position um, in that way. And that's uh, just such a great love. Um, and, you know, a love where he would, they would die for us like he did on the cross. That they would do every single thing possible to give us a, a chance to rec be reconciled to him. That he would die so that we could be reconciled. Um, and it's, it's the only way. It was the only way for us to be restored. Um, and he and he did it. And he died so that we could be restored which is just it's just so amazing that this god like that, that created the earth that created the stars and the planets and that would they would they would go to die in such a shameful way and having all the horrible sins of the entire world poured upon himself being flogged and and uh, scourged in a in a way where he was ripped apart and didn't even so disfigured that he didn't even look like a man anymore that's just a, such a, an amazing love um, but he would he would do it uh, because he wants a relationship with us because he wants to be with us and to guide us and help us through our life and help us through our struggles and help us uh, develop and help us grow um, and he already knows us, but he wants us to know him. And he wants us to be in this relationship with him. And that's just uh, an amazing, amazing love that he has for us. And we see this um, wanting to know um, him illustrated in this, uh, in this passage in Matthew uh, chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Yeah, you can follow along. Again, that's Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Uh, it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many of you will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons? And in your name perform any miracles? Then I will tell them play, plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, evildoers. I never knew you. Those are sobering words and um, hard to hear, um, but there's, you know, people in church that are sitting in church every Sunday that don't know the Lord, and because attending church won't save you, um, giving money won't save you, being confirmed won't save save you, baptism won't save you, communion won't save you. 
even identifying as a Christian won't save you. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. And accepting his atonement on our behalf will save you and me. God wants to know you and be in relationship with you and you in relationship with him. Do you truly want to know God? And the best way to know God is to read the Bible. You know, start with the Gospel of John, uh, read the other Gospels, go back and read uh, Genesis. And I mean, you see his character, you see his goodness, you see his love, you see his compassion, you see his patience through all throughout the Old Testament. Um, they were constantly worshiping false gods and he was so patient with them. He's still so patient with us today that he hasn't wiped us out like we deserve. Um, it's trusting yourself like clay in the potter's hands that you trust yourself to be shaped by him, you know, shaped by him now and shaped by him in eternity. You know, are you really willing to roll the dice on your afterlife, you know, and, and hope that you have guessed right. Um, Jesus has already told us plainly. If you have not repented of your sin and recognize your need to be saved. You know, you don't need to know, guess about the outcome of the dice roll. It's going to come up snake eyes. It's not going to end well for you. He's made it crystal clear. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. It's me. That's it. You know, the Pharisees, their full-time job was was being good, you know, and keeping the Old Testament law. They, they, and they missed the heart of God by a mile. You know, they would tie their spices. They'd take the little spices and nine, nine for me and one for God and nine for me and one for God and nine for me and one for you know little teeny spices and they you know and and they'd strain a gnat out of their drink cuz it would make them you know uh, unclean but they just had no compassion for people and they exploited and used people and Jesus said in in Matthew 5:20 but I warn you your righteousness Unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So the disciples here in this must have been like, what? You have to be a better person than the Pharisees. That's that's like their full-time job is being a good person. How am I going to be better than them? You know? And so, like, seriously, how can anybody go to heaven? Um, and then in the same chapter later on, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 48, you are to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. What? Jesus, what are you talking about? How am I going to be perfect? I can't be perfect. How can I get to heaven? I'm being perfect. I, nobody's perfect. Um, and that's true. Nobody is perfect. Um, so if you're trying to get to heaven on your good works, you have to be perfect. It's either 100% or fail. And nobody's perfect. The Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All 7.9 billion of us are sinners. Me, you, and every person that you've met or haven't met are sinners. And we can't earn our way to God. Um, you have to be perfect. So that way will not work. And the Bible is very clear. If anyone was going to do it, the Pharisees would do it. Because they were strict on being perfect and doing everything perfect all the time and that's what they thought about being perfect and they still missed it by a mile um, so will you know in conclusion which thief will you be like the repentant one uh, or the rejecting one you know the repentant one or the rejecting one and if you're thinking, well, maybe I'll do a third option, you know, I'll do, I'll do nothing. I won't make a decision. Well, not making a decision is rejecting Jesus. Not doing anything is still doing something and still rejecting Jesus. So if you remember one thing from today, from what we talked about, Jesus came to die as the only way to reconcile us to God. 
Jesus came to die as the only way to reconcile us to God. I pray that you'll change your mind. If you haven't already, um, decide to follow Jesus and follow him today. Um, Merry Christmas. God bless.